Oh yeah, we are live. Hello. <laughs> Welcome everyone. This is so exciting. I'm like, my smile is going to break my face. <laughs> <laughs> I think my face will hurt by the end of it. So <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's very Barbie of us too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> On trend. for the time. Yeah. On trend. <laughs> uh, as you come in, please, yeah, tell us where you're coming in from. I always think that's so much fun. UK, Colorado. Okay. Jamaica? Yeah, I think I saw Jamaica, Uruguay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're so fast. <laughs> I know. Arizona, it's going so fast. New Zealand, I saw in Chicago. Woohoo. How is the frozen south? <laughs> it's so <laughs> cold down there right now. <laughs> it's so hot right now. Croatia. Spain, Croatia. Gosh. <laughs> Peru. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have like all of the continents. And all the states, America. it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Arizona, Michigan, Vermont. This is oh so much fun. Toronto in the house. I feel like we're missing maybe an Asian country. Anybody, anybody in Asia? LA, oh, where it's sunny and beautiful. <laughs> Not hot. Mexico. There you go. Welcome. They're moving so fast. Lots of Chicago. Ooh, I just came back from Chicago. Oh. Midwest in the house, in Chicago. <laughs> Love it. Of course, I am hailing from the one and only DC where uh, Hades would feel at home as it is so warm. <laughs> so hot in DC <laughs> and humid. I know, it's the worst. <laughs> Hades would be like, I am home. <laughs> and it's only great because you're here, but yeah, no. I thought I knew humidity because I'm from Oklahoma, but I went to DC and I was like, never. I, no, that is top tier humidity. And I, it's awful. <laughs> you can cook you. an egg. <laughs> yeah, 89 degrees Fahrenheit and humid. Mm -hmm. Yep, I walked outside and I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Las Vegas, 119 this weekend. It is 102 today in Oklahoma. So. Die. <laughs> no, see, mm -mm, uh uh. Shout out to my Jamaica people because we know, like, at least at the very least, you're getting a breeze, something. No, it would be nice if there was something, you know, else to, you know, yeah, cut, cut the heat, but no. <laughs> I think I just saw in Chicago said seven degrees Celsius there. I'm really bad at conversions, but I think is that in the 20s, maybe for you in Fahrenheit, something. I have no idea. Mm. I have oh, no I'm no idea. I look it up every <laughs> single time. I like a baking. Oh, 40. Someone said 40. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I trust okay. that person. <laughs> yeah, we trust you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing math related is like my strength at all. So. <laughs> and what at were all. you just saying earlier? Like, know your strength. Know your strength. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I think the initial rush of people are in, and I know that if they're anything like me, they want to hear you all talk about your book. So welcome, everyone. Isn't it awesome? If you're excited, go ahead and show your excitement in the chat because we can't hear you, but we can see you. So go ahead and do that. Yes! Yeah, Emily. <laughs> That's Emily. <laughs> Emily designed that cover, so she... The, the, the game of gods and she's in the chat so that's cool oh awesome oh, that's such yeah. a cool cover yeah thank the people you are excited to hear from you all so happy pub day scarlet and although thank your you. pub day internet or for the u.s sorry was last week we already we already had it <laughs> this week people are getting excited internationally so congratulations to you too nalini we love having you, you on here Thank you both. I want to say before we get started, thank you also to Berkeley and Bloom for making this happen. This collabo is like magical and I'm so excited <laughs> to talk to you all. Um, don't forget to buy books if you haven't already. Um, 
I can't guarantee you that there won't be like any spoilers at all, but I try to be not spoilery in my questions. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Heart XO. We still have book plates at ECD Bookshop from Nalini. <laughs> Um, so if you order your book there, you'll you'll get them as, as long as supplies last. And we also have copies of Scarlet's book as well. So make sure you order them. Um, and lastly, don't forget to put any questions you might have for the authors in the Q&A. That's where I'm going to look through when it's question time. And any agreement, excitement, general fangirling, which I am always here for, goes in the chat. And um, then we'll be able to go ahead and get started. So I'll be moderating the conversation today. Hi, my name is Destiny. I work at East City Bookshop. I run the Romance Book Club there and just generally am here for all of the fangirling, as I said. Um, I will be conducting a conversation with our lovely authors today, who I'll introduce in a second, even though you should already know them. And then um, we'll take some audience questions and then we will play a game. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, USA Today bestselling author Scarlett St. Clair is a citizen of the Muscogee Nation and the author of the Hades and Persephone series, the Hades Saga, and others. Oh, I, I just had it in my hand. And you're here today for A Game of Gods, <laughs> which, you know, we have kind of an idea because of, of, of the Hades and Persephone Saga book, but oh my goodness, oh, oh. <laughs> Um, Scarlett has a master's degree in library science and information studies and a bachelor's degree in English writing. And she is obsessed with Greek mythology. If we didn't know what is wrong with us, murder <laughs> mysteries and the afterlife. Huge round of applause for Scarlett in the chat. We are excited. Show your And of course we have Nalini Singh who is passionate about writing, and boy, are we glad that she is. Uh, though she's traveled as far afield as the deserts of China, the temples of Japan. Oh my gosh, is this a book in and of itself? This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the frozen landscapes of Antarctica. It is the journey of the imagination that fascinates her most. She's beyond delighted to be able to follow her dream as a writer, and we are beyond delighted to follow you. Go ahead and give it up for Nalini. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm just going to start off by asking you all, as authors of wildly popular series, what is the, significant of the significance of these particular books for you? And how do you see it moving the worlds you've created forward? And we can start with whoever wants to jump in. <laughs> I feel like one, one, one dial up on the torture for games. <laughs> how about you, Scarlett? You take this one first. Um, this is so difficult for me because I... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the concept of God is like the, the alternate point of view of Malice, but uh, it, it does have a whole other plot from Malice because Hades does like his own thing throughout the entire series. It's, it's not necessarily him while he is pining after Persephone. It's not necessarily him just like trying to win her or trying to marry her. There's a lot of other things going on in the world that relate to war and battle and prophecies. Um, but the fun part about gods is bringing in a, a Dionysus's point of view and um, just sort of giving insight into he, just the, the other dynamics and relationships that Hades has with other gods. Um, and I had the most fun writing those points of view. And I think the only reason I was able to finish gods is because I got to write Dionysus's point of view. Um, <clears throat> so I think, you know, just showing the other side of you know, a, the other side of like Hades' plot made the world larger. Um, so for me, and by the way, those 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 scenes were like really good. I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Oh, Dionysus, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, it would be non-spoilery, but I was like, I was I was into that. I was like, where is this going? But um, for me, so way back at the start of the series uh, with the sigh we knew about something called rehabilitation centers where if you didn't behave and if you weren't emotional and you didn't follow the rules the sigh would rehabilitate you 
which basically meant a psychic brainwave that basically took away your personality and a lot of higher functions and kind of left you, um, you know, like a blank slate and not capable of much. So we knew about these horrible places, um, but now with the changes in the CIRAs, we didn't know what happened to the, re the rehabilitation centers. And so that, that sort of underlies this book is um, the tagline was what, happens to the broken where are they now you know all these really damaged people that we have and that decided to their own and so that's where it begins and and that that's that's sort of the underlying question of of this book and I thought it's really important because this is a growing world it's a changing world there's a lot of developments it's really important to answer those questions because it's this giant elephant just sitting in the room because these people exist and these centers where rehabilitation happened exist. And so I really wanted to dig into that and explore what happened. And um, so from a plot perspective, that's, that was the major element of this book. And I think it was really important to, to do it and confront it because the Sai are really good at hiding all the bad things they've done. And the time for that is over. So oh, awesome. it's over. <laughs> it is over. It is indeed. <laughs> so both of your books, I think, <laughs> tackle this idea of predestination in a way and destiny. And it's not because my name is destiny, but it, they really do tackle that. Um, <laughs> and like also how, how much we control our own paths and specifically who we choose to love. So what are your thoughts about fate in connection to your books? And we'll start with Nalini this time, even though you just sent in. <laughs> Okay, so this is an interesting question because obviously I write about mates who, who come together and you know, it's, it's a special bond, it's meant to be. But thinking about it, I think there's, there's a lot of choice in there as well. So I'm gonna take um, Caleb as, as um, an example because you know, it's an older book and a lot of people know it. And so Caleb <laughs> knew very early on who was the person who was meant for him to an obsessive extent, right? Like, and, but he had so many choices along the way. He could have stopped looking for her and it would have never happened. So even though someone is meant for you, you still have to, you still have to fight for that person, you know, to, so fate might make someone for you, but you still have to make yourself to that person or get yourself to that person. Um, so I think, yeah, like I think that's my view on it. Like, like it's it's not like just because you're fated to be together, you'll just end up together no matter what. You know, there's lots of other things that can come in between. Um, you you can also turn your back on fate, which happened in one of my books, which was very controversial. And they said, no, actually, I've fallen in love, and I'm not going to be with this person who is meant to be my mate. So. Um, yeah, I think there's still a large element of choice because in the end, they have to be in an emotional place where they allow the mating bond to actually occur. And if they're not in that place, it won't occur. So. <clears throat> I was thinking about this question because I was like, I think it's, uh, it's interesting to answer it in, in connection to a Greek mythology retelling where you have the faith. Um, and sort of, you know, everyone believed kind of in that concept of fate. And, you know, you had this destiny and you all these heroes had this, this one destiny that they were that prophesied to fulfill or whatever. And I think that concept is, is very prevalent within the entire series. Um, <clears throat> but everyone kind of has this underlying question about it. Like, uh, you know, Hades always says, like, if the faith unraveled our destiny, I would find my way back to you, right? So there's always this question of sort of like, can you overthrow fate? Can we overthrow fate? Um, the whole concept of like Theseus and and uh, Triad and, and the impious, right, is they're constantly, you know, trying to free themselves from uh, the like sort of uh, possession of the gods or, or the fates. Um, and I would say, yes, in some ways, like I think we could look at Sisyphus, right? Who managed to cheat death several times or even Zeus, like he managed to cheat prop 
hypotheses over and over again. But uh, the, in the end, I think like those fates in, within the story come true somehow. So it's almost like fate is always gunning for them somehow. So the, the idea is that you can outrun fate um, uh, for a while, but it's going to catch up with you. And the longer you delay it, the worse it's going to be. Um, I think if, you know, we can look at Ru Ruin as an example as well <clears throat> with Lexa, right? We tried to delay the fate of her life uh, and the way it ended up going was worse, right? Um, so it sort of has a cyclical thing, like all Greek mythology really does. Um, yeah, so I think I just try to kind of like mimic that in, in the book with the concept of fate. Yeah, and I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 know, I, I see that the, it does function differently in the books because of the sense of mm -hmm. lore sort of already existing around Greek mythology. So. Hmm. I'm gonna keep thinking about that as well. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> asking us these really deep questions, Destiny. <laughs> really I know this is your so fault. Right? <laughs> yeah. I gotta, I gotta put in the work in order to enjoy the torture at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, everyone, but VT does. By the way, you can upvote questions in the Q and A that you really want to <clears throat> get answered. So go ahead and make sure you do that. Um, okay, so we see that in this book, still um, game of God, a game of gods, that Hades still feels sort of unworthy of Persephone in some ways and yes. is concerned about the harm that his past can bring to her. And similarly, Theo is concerned about her, how her whole situation is gonna impact Yaakov and, and everybody um, in the chain thrilling sphere. So these fears kind of drive a lot of what they do and are sort of their motivations. And I wonder what other motivations you think they have in your books, slash if you wanna talk about any other character motivations. This is hard for me because Hades is so like so. What motivates Hades? I think I have an answer, but <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, it's interesting. It's hard to you know how it's like hard to go back to the where your brain was when you were like writing God because I'm in chaos right now and I'm like you know like his kind of ultimate goal is to sort of you know have have some kind of peace, right? Um because the, his life has literally been chaos as you know that the title of the next book implies right um <clears throat> but <clears throat> yeah I don't know I think that it's it's so difficult his his motivation is, is very much um centered around Persephone and sort of living a peaceful life and uh, but I think I more so near Persephone where um I think and she <clears throat> people like to you know, put Hades on a pedestal. And I argue about this all the time because he's, you know, that the whole series is like everyone making fun of him be for being an alpha male, like literally like, you know, he's just, he's kind of everyone's, everyone kind of jokes about like how possessive he is and things like that. And they're like, calm down. It's not that big of a deal. But for Persephone, you know, she wants to live this life where that, where she like, instead of being like, sort of like Hades property in the, in the media, she gets to be known for who she is and what she does. And she makes her name for herself and it has no association to who she dates. I think we see that a lot of times in media with celebrities and things like that. And, you know, women who like are in a relationship and they do really, really great things, but they're married to someone who's famous and they get called like so-and-so's wife or, or whatever, the wife of so-and-so instead of by their name. And that really irritates Persephone. And so, so, you know, her goals like really align with how I feel about like what, what I would want from, you know, that kind of <clears throat> attention is to just be known for my work at the end of the day and not my like per personal life or, or you know that kind of thing um so I kind of align more with her and I think more in terms of like her motivations rather than Hades because he just annoys me and everyone loves him but, but I you know he's I just writing his point of view is just like oh, here we go again like more <laughs> more like more just pining you know so I sound so terrible, don't I? I'm like, I wrote this character and I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> Pining and boning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I like to see, the, you have a question later that I thought was very interesting about like the, sex, the sexual, sexual elements of like the, the books and everything. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I'll have, I have more to say about that. <laughs> la la. <laughs> um, okay.
okay so i'm interested in sort of the chaos of both of these characters like uh some female main characters specifically so both <clears throat> Persephone and theo have powers essentially that they are really they have limited control over but they're game changing can you talk about this to whatever extent you'd like I think um, Theo is interesting because her actual power is very minor. So in the sense of the Psy Changing World, she is the first major protagonist we've had who has a very limited power, what she is known for, right? So, you know, she's a gradient too, and that's just like, you might as well not be Psy at this point, according to the Psy. You're, you're barely, you're barely one of us. You're and forgotten. Oh. You forgot. Like she literally is pushed in a corner and like. But so the other power that she has access to, I try not to be spoilery, is not actually hers, right? So she never feels in control of it because she doesn't feel like it's hers, like that she has any right to it. Whereas her own power, this very minor power that she has, is actually can be incredibly destructive because of how she's been taught to use it. And so she's very, she has very complicated emotions because obviously she has been told all her life that she is powerless um, in the psychic sense that, you know, she's this, she has, her, her brother is this major, major power. He's a gradient nine, you know, above that. And he is the, the scion of the family, the one who's going to take them into the future. And he's literally her twin, right? So, and she's been told from childhood, you know, you're, you're bringing him down. You need to be pushed aside. And, and then at the same time, she's starting to realize that her power is deadly. And so suddenly she's in this conflict of she has this very, very horrible ability to do something. And yet, she's powerless and so she's caught in this space in between where she's really struggling with who she is like who she is because she's always seen herself as in the shadow of her twin and yet at the same time we find out and, and this is a tiny spoiler but i'll spoil you anyway she is actually protecting him the entire time like they think they've broken the twins and the thing is they never broke them that they're unbreakable. And so there's this whole complicated relationship between them, which I found really fascinating to write between Theo and Pax, um, as these twins with this, you know, terrible backstory where they're literally physically separated as children. Um, and yet they are telepaths. So how do you separate twin telepaths, you know? So, and, and it's just, it's really complicated and messy and they have such an interesting dynamic. And I had fun writing that relationship as much as I did the romantic one, because this book has two sets of twins. And so it's just those sibling dynamics are so fun because the bears are completely different in how they relate. Like these two, Yakov and Pavel, you know, they're going to beat each other up. That's their way of showing affection, you know. But like if anybody else tries to beat them up, you know, you're in trouble. Only I am allowed to beat up my twin. So yeah, it was, it's just, it's, it's fascinating. I, I love, they are very chaotic. Chaos is a good word for it. The bears are just chaotic in general and really fun with it. And Theo, Theo's powers are chaotic because she's been confronted with something that she never believed about herself or even knew about herself because memory is part of the problem with Theo. So yeah. That's my chaotic answer to the question about chaos. <laughs> I know, Scarlett, you got thoughts too. I just want to interject and say anybody who knows me knows that I am, say, deathly afraid, but, you know, kind of afraid of identical twins. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need more of an explanation. <laughs> Just I identical though. Identical. No, for turn out, they're yeah. fine. You know, it, okay. But like, you yeah. may have the same DNA. I'm scared. Maybe I watched too much true crime. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, um, Yakov, you know, I, I, I was like, okay, okay, you can do it, Destiny. I believe in you. And, and I ended up loving it. Um, but yeah, me and twins, <laughs> we, we struggle. <laughs> I actually have a twin brother, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, Scarlett! <laughs> I love the, I love the twins. 
twin dynamic because I, I don't read that very often. So, mm. but yeah, <laughs> just mm. identical one. <laughs> Are any identical twins in the in the audience? I mean, I'm sure you're great. Someone is a twin. To... Karen is a twin. So <laughs> I just have to oh, immediately figure one. out what the difference. I know there's another one. Yeah, I don't look at all like my brother. Yeah, I'm for sure. I don't look like my brother at all, though. So no one would ever know. We're just siblings. So love it. And we don't have any cool powers. So <laughs> <laughs> I missed out on that one. <laughs> Um, with Persephone's powers, I feel like, um, I didn't want to put her in that, like, situation, you know, if you, when you grow up without power, right, and you discover it, it's like, you know, pe these people instantly learn how to use it and harness it very well and control it very well, and I was like, I don't really want her to do that, plus, I feel like, <clears throat> I kind of, I really do love when, when power sort of, like, the, the strength of your power comes from your feminine rage, <laughs> because, you know, like, I split sometimes, like, that's where the, we're most powerful, um, so it's sort of where her, like, you know, her, her strength comes from, is, like, when she gets angry, when she gets scared, you know, she's, she's going to, to fight harder, um, and the progression over time, I, I think, is very interesting, because we don't get to really, we see one spark, like, in ruin, a slash retribution where she's like you know all of her power just like come, comes barreling out of her um and then in gods and malice we see her sort of use her power uh turn people's power against them which is very scary I think for you know especially for Olympians um <clears throat> so I just I think you know that's just that's just part of it is I didn't really want her to 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 have control it really and I I think I sometimes I think like there's there's, it's too clean to be in control all the time, right? Like, I think there's, there's beauty to that chaos, especially when you're, you're going into battle or you're going to fight a very scary power. Like maybe you need to be more chaotic than, than controlled. So many yeah, I can, I, uh, so many so in the chat. So many times in the chat. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that was just... <laughs> Dora's box. What did I do? <laughs> you really did. <laughs> That's what they did. Dora's box. <laughs> Identical way. <laughs> I'll use oh, that right. in chaos. So. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. You guys, got, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, this whole idea of perspectives that you have in the book. So, so um, <clears throat> Nalini, I'm interested in how you decided what each character reveals about the situation and Scarlet, how you continue to move a story forward when you're essentially retelling events just from a different perspective. Hmm. So it's funny because I'm not a very, I don't plan when I write. So I'm a very instinctive writer. So I, I don't have these I don't have these thoughts that I'm writing unless unless I'm something's going wrong and it's not working and I'm like what's wrong with this book and then then I might think about why it's not working but otherwise I just go with it and it's the character usually is the the one in charge of a scene is usually the one most emotionally in, invested for some reason um whether in that particular point the scene is about like if I was breaking down a scene looking backwards but this is not something I do as I'm writing they just tell me what they what they want to say and I just put it on the page and you know figure out the rest later and in this one we had um dual love stories going on right like dual romances and so with um Pasha and Arwen because they have been in multiple previous books and they're kind of settled as a couple so obviously we weren't going to have huge scenes with them because um like i know everyone loves the the scenes but if you just put together a book with those happy scenes it's, <laughs> it, it it there's there's no tension and i think um it's it doesn't work as a book but it worked really well woven in with theo and Jakob's story because First of all, they're twins, you know, Yaakov and Pavel. So obviously he's going to be in his brother's life and his brother's going to know what's going on with him. And so it made very natural sense that these characters are going to meet and these situations are going to come up where we are in their point of view. Like after dinner, you know, you can see that they went for a walk by the river That's and they just had all had dinner together. So it's a very natural flow. And that's what I try and write, like these this sort of like, I love writing huge casts, you know, 
where people interact and weave in and out of each other's lives. And so that's that's where it comes in as who gets what seen or who reveals what. Uh, and obviously in some places, only one person has information. Um, particularly say we're talking about Theo, when it's about the Psy and what's going on in there, she's the one with the information because Yaakov literally cannot access the Psynet. He cannot access the network that has this information. So sometimes it's just a logic point. And in comparison with the bears, she has no idea what's going on in the bear clan, right? Like she is like, one of my favorite scenes in the book is just the really happy scene where they're, they're literally throwing bear cubs at each other. And she's horrified. She's like, you're throwing these children? And he's like, no, no, it's fine. And we're in his head because, it, you know, and we're also in her head like completely horrified because we need to know what this looks like from the outside. Um, so like sometimes it's just that it's an emotional choice on my part like who is going to be like Yakov is not going to have a reaction because he's like oh I'll just throw a bear cub it's fine they like it <laughs> meanwhile she's like what are you doing <laughs> you know so yeah sometimes so sometimes it's logic and sometimes it's just emotional like whoever's going to give the most impact I guess yeah I, I just want to say <laughs> Just all the love for both of you and your your perspective writing skills. Just want to <laughs> acknowledge it. <laughs> I'm always like relieved at that because I do like Nalini. I really relate to how you said you write too because I don't plan things and I think that people think because of how these two POVs overlapped, I probably did. But each book I go in and think I really hope to how this works because I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, and so when I get through any point of view, I'm like, thank God it works. Like, <laughs> like oh God, <laughs> every time. Um, but I do, yeah, I think one of the things is that, you know, um, since I did rewrite like the whole book, the trajectory of the book from Haiti's point of view, which I know it's been done before, but I said, if I do it, it has to have a completely different plot. So I had to give Haiti the completely different motive throughout the whole book. Like his end goal is completely separate from Persephone's. Um, so it feels, I think it is a romance, but it also has like, a, I think a very strong, uh, you know, um, like action plot. And then um, he, it, I think <laughs> the other part of that is I recognized that there are times throughout the book where um, he's not going to be thinking the same things like his brain like you know even though he says the same stuff like it's not going to mimic what Persephone is thinking and as I was sort of reading through like I, I would copy like a, a touch of darkness chapter in sport for a game of fate for example um, and, and just having to go through that and really think critically about where he's at and his mindset and flip those chapters it was so hard and I was like why the hell did I, why did I do this like what like I oh it was so hard and it got harder like in a game of gods I was like I regret this completely like why, why did I do why did I do this um which is why Dionysus kept me going so much because his point of view is just like so fun and he's like the ultimate like beta male he's like he's not like Hades at all um so, so yeah I think I think that was kind of like it was it was also refreshing to have him have you know a separate plot and not just be like you know falling in love with Persephone the, or you know constantly because that's annoying and <laughs> I don't think we want to read that ever and over again can I ask a writerly question because I've done it once where I've written a book in the same timeline as a previous book did the timeline drive you insane like oh yeah the I'm terrible at it too like I, I like I really rely on my copy editor honestly to help me make sure that my timelines are correct because like because we get down to like this is three days or like this is two days or it's so difficult it, it uh, and you know this is this is going on this is three books you know um and I was really worried about with that, that with Dionysus because at first when I was sort of trying to figure out where his points of view laced in I thought, gosh, I hope this, I hope this does make sense in, in the scheme of things. And I realized when people were reading it, they're like, what the hell? Like, what, what in the world? Where are we going with this? Why is this, why does this matter? And I'm like, it matters, I promise. <laughs> but yeah, it was um, I always struggle with no matter what book though, even like King of Battle and Blood and, and Mount of Made of Glass, I always struggle with the timeline. It doesn't matter, you know. Can't I can't keep track of it. I don't <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious if people in the audience can comment, but outside of something that's glaring, I know I'm not like 
fine tooth comb. They said it was 36 hours ago. I'm oh, personally- some people are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I'm like, is that- <laughs> no, we, we, we know. <laughs> People were with us yesterday. <laughs> it's wrong. I tried so hard to get it right, but you know, but also, you know, the other part of that is you do have editors, you know, who try to help you as well. And if they miss it too, you're you know, you know we're all just human and we're all like, you know, these are big books too. It's like it was yeah, 33 you know. <laughs> instead of 36 hours. We're fine. Like uh. I, I kind of think some of those things are really fun though. And I, when I find them, I like to tell my readers about them myself. Cause then they, then I, they all like, we're all like in on this inside joke, you know, like there, there's one, like where I say something about Hades being virtually fireproof when he's like making cookies or whatever. And then later he burns his hands on a cake. And I just think that's really hilarious that I like missed that completely. And I'm like, listen, he still burns. He just heals quickly. <laughs> but I didn't catch it. I had no clue. Like none of us caught it. We were just like, here you go. And then the readers were like, what is this? <laughs> Fire. Yeah. I always say whatever. Sarah is in a hardcover and we fixed it in the paper bank. The hardcover is a special edition now. Yes. <laughs> I kind of I wish that was for me though because I do release hardcover and paperback at the same time. Oh. Uh, so I don't get that. <laughs> so everything is a special edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I know. So funny. <laughs> I guess I, I maybe 9 times out of 10 when it comes to time things like that like what you said I'm like oh I might I might get it but when it comes to time I'm like what is time I don't know <laughs> you know it's irrelevant right like time is a deal it's yeah like it's, it's a, a construct, construct. <laughs> yeah. who cares um okay so the last question I'm gonna ask before we get to the audience questions because there are so many of them remember y'all upvote the ones you want so that maybe you know we could prioritize those um so sex and intimacy function differently I think in these books because of the different couples, right? Like Hades and Persephone have been together for a few books. And then you have um, Dionysus and, and Ariandi, like, and then you on Nalini's side, you have Pavel and Arwen, and you have Yaakov and Theo. There's just so much happening there. So for Scarlett, how do you continue to make it meaningful? And for Nalini, how did you approach it in this book? I, I, this is so, I, I struggle with this actually, especially with Hades and Persephone, because we go through so many books with them and I, they work through their issues through sex. And um, it's so interesting to watch it happen because like, even the way that I write sex scenes has changed from a touch of darkness to gods to, to chaos, especially. Um, because in darkness, they're very basic. It's just like this very like quick intensity, right? That's passion. And then in Ruin, I feel like <clears throat> it's a, there's a little bit more depth, but there's more like heartache there. Malice is like, there's this desperation. Like there's a lot of sex and malice and gods. I almost was like, what the hell was I thinking? Like I see that you could, you see a, a pattern here where I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, and then I realized it's just because they're afraid. They're like constantly afraid. And that's kind of how they like work through their issues. And then when I got to chaos, there's fewer sex scenes, but the ones that they have are so they're so intense it took me three days to write one of them and I because I was trying to get the, the emotion across um so I do feel like that they're, they're even though I write a lot of sex scenes I feel like they're very very intentional um Dionysus and Ariadne that's probably my favorite one though because Dionysus is so awkward when we get like the first time they have sex he's like afterwards he's like I don't know what to do like you know, whereas Hades is like, he knows exactly like what to do, how to handle it, like, you know, we're cuddling, blah, blah, blah. And, and Dionysus is like, do I kiss you? Like, what, what do I do? So it really speaks to their personalities, I think, with, with how they separately handle, you know, the, those intimate situations. But um, it's very challenging to make them different, to also communicate where they are at in their relationship. I, I definitely feel like I struggle with that. Um, so with the Psy, so all the Psy are virgins, doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman or it's, they just, they just don't have sex well under silence, right? Like, cause they're completely emotionless and being tactile and having sexual contact was like totally taboo. 
And so Theo is coming out of that. And now she's really attracted to this bear who is like the polar opposite. Of all the changelings, they are probably the most blunt and the most like, woo, sexy times, you know? <laughs> they, 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 just be like, they, are, they are just like, they are totally open. Like, like they, they will just get naked, they will have fun, and they'll be best friends with you afterwards, right? So it's a very sort of, it's this collision of two totally different personalities and totally different, like, um, skill level of experience um and yet at the same time what levels it is that theo's um pavel is like oh, getting the names mixed up but actually it works with pa pavel too but yakov is like really confronted by what she's doing to him because he's like whoa 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 you know like what is happening and so the them coming together it's quite an exploration because they were how, how to figure it out you know like how is this going to work because she has to be really comfortable to to even get to the level of where that they're, they're um, you know they're having sex or they're making love. Um, and with um, Pavel and Owen, they're obviously a couple already, right? So the scene that takes place in the book, I wanted it to be really tender because of what happens in that scene. I don't want to. I try not to spoil it, but something major, you know occurs and so I just wanted to show the the love in uh, between those two because most of the time when we see them you know they've had a very snarky relationship with each other so we've never actually seen them just being who they are with each other in the quiet spaces when no one is looking and I thought it was really important to see that to see that this is who um, Pavel is to Arwen when they're alone you know and there is that huge tenderness he's super protective of him and so um that was just you know it was it's a lovely scene to write and yeah but with with Theo and um Yaakov it was it was much harder because they are starting from scratch and Theo has literally never even been kissed and now she's tangling with a bear and having to deal with him, which she does. Don't worry. Deal deal with <laughs> but um, yeah, just two completely different styles of intimacy and of scenes. And if we see them down the road, that's going to change again, right? Because Theo is with each each day that passes, she's becoming more and more confident in how to deal with the physicality of him because he's such a physical creature. And so, um, yeah, it, it would be actually fun to go back and the brighter scene between the two of them, like, you know, two years after they first got together. I think that would be a whole different war game there. He might be in trouble by then, so. Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna demand it now, so you said it. So. <laughs> I mean, you can see silver in this book, right? I'm like, who is that? <laughs> Like, she's just like a different person. I mean, let's let's be clear. Silver was already always in charge, but um, it just looks so much different. Even how she manages Yaakov, um, <laughs> yeah, it's great to see. She was like you know, you know, in training, so yeah. Yeah, like this is what you're gonna do. I have to say, <laughs> to put this on the record, in that book, when Yaakov sees the picture and he's like. Ah, this is my mate. <laughs> that was the funniest thing to me because there was never, it was never like, maybe it's not her. It was, oh man, now what do I have to do? <laughs> oh man. Okay. So there are like almost 40 questions in here and I'm going to do my best. Don't hate me forever, y'all. We're going to do what we can, but uh, <clears throat> I'll start off with Nalini. The, one of the most upvoted questions was, for changelings, it's said that the male half of a mated pair knows what needs to be done to complete the dance and the female ends it. But how does that work for gay couples? How does it work? Well, it's interesting because so far the only one we've seen, the only couple we've seen up close is a sigh and a changeling, not two changelings. And so that again yeah. changes the equation because obviously the mating bond is a changeling thing, right? It, it comes from the, the, the wildness within. So obviously in that case, it would be the changeling half of the pair that sort of completes it because the Psy half 
couldn't do it. You know, their, their bonds mm -hmm. are different. And um, so I think that's something I, that's a question up in the air at the moment, but it's kind of like way back when, when we had Mercy and Riley's book, we had two dominant changelings and, you know, they're talking about what the cubs are going to end up shifting into because one was a wolf and one was a leopard. And they said, oh, it's going to be the one that's the most dominant. And of course, we know what the answer was to that, which is that we don't actually still know. <laughs> the answer to that question. <laughs> um, so I think it's a little bit, um, I think it's going to depend on every couple. It's going to depend on every couple that probably one is going to be more sort of, um, uh, how do I say, maybe one is more primal and, and, and one is more like a, a thoughtful kind of responder to that, you know, like the, maybe they're not the one who is like the more possessive from the get go, but then they're quietly possessive. And so that the dynamics will, will always shift. And so that's, that's actually something I'm working out myself in my head, as you can see, because I think about that, like I sit here and I think about these things and I think I don't actually know right now. I don't know the answer to this question because I would literally have to write a book, I think, to work through all of this and figure out how, how it would go. Um, so for now, I mean, it would happen. They'll figure it out, but I think it wouldn't be as simple when it's more binary. Yeah. I guess that's my non-answer. Sorry, guys. Sometimes I don't know because I, I just have to figure it out. Like, that's part of the joy of writing a series. I think Scarlett would agree. Like, it's learning yeah. things as you go. And it's this process of discovery. And it's like, oh, actually, I was wrong. And I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's great. No, it's great. I, I, I love being validated. <laughs> I feel so <laughs> validated right now. I'm like, yes, this is how I write too. Like, thank you. <laughs> Because now I'm thinking, what if you get two submissives together who are both really quiet and neither one of them is like, you know, how's that going to work? Is someone going to make the first move? You know, so it's just, it's just like, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out when it comes up, guys. <laughs> so wait and see. I, at least to me, that is a guarantee that you'll keep writing these books. That's all I care about. <laughs> that Monday I'm impressed. Gets I'm impressed with how many books you have in your series. Like, that amazes me. I'm like, I cannot wait to be finished with this seven book series. I'm like, come on, I'm almost done. Uh, <laughs> so <sounds> terrible. <laughs> I'll say, uh, I'll bump over to a question for Scarlett, which is, oh my gosh, it just moved. Where did the question go? <laughs> okay, here we are, here we are, here we are. Okay, from me, and sorry, other person, I, I didn't shout you out for that question, but heart XO, I hope you forgive me. Um, Mia P asks, which God's stories are you most excited to explore after Hades and Persephone, if any? Um, I'm excited to write um, Aphrodite, Aphrodite and Hephaestus. I, I think some of, some of you guys know like the title of the book is Temptress of Fire and Fury. And I think it'll be it'll be really interesting to kind of explore that dynamic. If you if you've read Hades Saga, you get more uh, of an insight into their dynamic. But um yeah, lots of pain there, lots of like just you know, they have a they have a partnership. And I, you know, you, they we all we know that they care about each other, but as far as like love and sort of like reclaiming that I think will, will be pretty difficult, but I want to do that. Ari Ariadne and Dionysus, of course, we've seen them. And um, I would love to write um, Athena and Medusa as well. Kind of got my mm. eye on that one. <clears throat> Do you see my head just bobbing? Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> asked about this too. I, have, I also have the, <laughs> some novellas. Like I, I want to write the Apollo and Hyacinth novella. All the novellas take place in ancient Greece, so that takes me a little bit longer because I'm sort of like a stickler to, you know, mythology and like history. So it just takes me a long time to be like, would this be realistic? And then I go read more and then come back and yeah, so it takes me a long time. Okay, I'm I'm just waiting the wings, waiting. The wings. <laughs> you know what? Me too. I am too. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I think we, yeah, we, we've got some time. We've got some time. So, Nalini, another question for you. Will there be a human side pair in the main series again? There seem to be a lot of changeling side pairings, but very little of human side and Trinity. Love your books. 
<laughs> well, it you. is the Psy Changeling series. Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, yes, they will be. They will be. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a boring old human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's some really interesting characters in uh, Venice that we left behind as humans. Um, so yeah, I actually thought the next book was going to feature a human, but um, it wasn't quite right. And so yeah, no, I have not. I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten the humans. <laughs> they are still very important to the series so yes they will emerge from the shadows victorious don't worry <laughs> I, still, oh, I still think i'll ever get over that <laughs> do, you, do you see human inside changeling because i don't <laughs> <laughs> you thought it would be a human and you're like it wasn't quite right because you can just feel that stuff like yeah especially if you're writing and you're and I always know when something's not working because I can't progress and yeah. it, so if I'm not moving forward in a book I know I did something wrong like some, I got something wrong I think it's exactly the same process a reader goes through like when you're reading a book and you just kind of am not like you you can put it down and go to sleep and it's the same as a writer if I can just walk away and I'm not bothered to come back mm -hmm. that's there's something wrong it's not working because I as the writer should be obsessed with my own book and I should want to know what's going on and I should want to figure this out not that there isn't hard stuff in writing but the story itself needs to compel me so if I get to a point where it's like yeah no I you know I have literally started a book after 100 pages restarted because I was like I just went on a wrong little meander into nowhere land and now I have yeah. to yeah yeah so the excitement has to be there mm, just as an FYI I'm seeing a lot of uh Malachi is any Malachi love <laughs> I mean, like Malachi is he a shark? Uh, who knows? Uh, <laughs> seeing a lot of Max and Sophia were awesome, so you know it can work out. Uh, a lot of human energy. <laughs> of oh, human I love Max. I love Max. He is a great representative. Yeah. He, you know, if you had to be a human, I, I'm I'm here for Max. So yeah, a lot of a lot of thoughts there, but um. Honestly, as I've stated before, I'm sure all of us will take whatever you lovely authors give to us. Um, so <laughs> let me go down. I, oh, here we go. The questions keep moving. No, keep, there are so many questions. I'm just like, no. okay, this was the one I wanted to ask, I think. What was your favorite myth to research when researching, or when writing, sorry, God, Scarlet? And oh, that's God specifically? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, gosh. I don't, oh, sorry. I, I, I get gods and chaos confused because they kind of cross, they cross over. Um, I know, I know. And I'm like, what did I, what did it's I research? <laughs> what did I research <laughs> for God? Um, I, well, I had a lot of fun looking at, um, because part of, um, I don't really like Odysseus, but part of uh, Dionysus and Ariadne's uh, journey is based off of uh, Dionysus's, like, you know, um, getting lost at sea, essentially. And, um, but what I had fun with is, like, figuring out which parts of that I, I was going to use. Um, so uh, the interesting part is, like, uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll just give you an example. When, when they get to the island of the Cyclops, um, and uh, um, Odysseus gives him wine to make him drunk. And, and then when he passes out, he attacks him. And I thought, oh God, that's perfect because Dionysus is the god of wine. So he can turn this lake into wine and get him drunk. And that's what I did. And I always love when things like that work out really well. So you can see like the parallels of how I was able to adapt the myth, like make it different, but adapt the myth in a very similar way. Um, and I live for that stuff. And it, it makes me sound like such a nerd, but I just, I love it. I was like, oh, it's meant to be because it works out so well. Um, yeah, and, and the sheep too. Like I had a lot of fun with the sheep on the island because there are sheep on that same island and you know, that 
And uh, I was like, what can I do with, with the sheep? That's really funny. And uh, I, had, I had a lot of fun with, with those, with the comic release sheep. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, those are, those are some of the things that I really enjoy doing when it comes to adapting the myths. Have you ever watched Thor Love and Thunder? I haven't. No, I missed okay, there's, out there's, on going to see it. There's a goat in there, and that is what I kept thinking with the oh, show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cow for, for Helio is always cracking yeah. up too, you know, because he does love his cows. Like it's like this thing. Um, no, that's so funny. I they're just it's just so easy to make them like comic relief characters, you know, and so. It worked out because so the first time I read it, I was like, what? And it's like, I cannot believe this right now. <laughs> so <laughs> at least to me, it worked. Uh, um, okay, we're what we're winding down on the time. And I mean, I see these questions. I want you to know, Nalini, Scarlet plans. I want to ask these questions, but our time <laughs> is limited. I like, do <laughs> I want to know about other enterprises that Sahara and Caleb may be silent investors for? I want to know about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to ask one more question that can apply to both of you, which is, <clears throat> What do you think are the best and worst parts of writing a longer series? Ooh, the best part is getting to follow a character's development along and the world development. So when I was younger, this was before the internet, people. <laughs> um, I used to basically write what I know is fan fiction in my head, right? I would get to the end of a book and I would want to know what happened next, but the book was done. So I would write more in my head, like make up what the characters did. And so now I don't have to do that. I can actually write books where we get to find out what happened next because particularly, um, I'll just use my Guild Hunter series as an example. So I have in that series, you know, I have a mortal falling in love with an immortal. And it's like, how could you end that with the book? Because like, what happens next? She's going into this entire world of people who have existed for thousands of years and her entire life is going to change. We can't finish with them falling in love. You know, it, it, we need to know what, what is the next step? Um, how does her life change? How does she adapt? How do they adapt? How does he adapt to not being the greatest power in the universe because now she she also has her own power you know um and she's just not going to do what he says so it's it's really i love doing that i love being able to explore the complexity of of relationships and of course we get to see how relationships grow and change not just the romantic relationship the friendships the families okay so that's i love that i love that part of it the hardest part is continuity you guys should see my notes. I have notes coming out my ears, okay? This, this, like the timelines, I have multiple timelines. I've got everyone's ages. I can tell you their star signs because I gave them all birthdays so I could keep track of how old people were, which you might think that's, that's obsessive, Nalini, but think about it. If you've got a kid, if you've got a baby and two years later, it's still a baby, there's something wrong, right? I need to know how old these people are. And so, um, yeah, the continuity is, is intense. Like I do a lot of work to make sure that things match up, not just in time, but just in detail. Like I reread, I just reread multiple books for the next book I'm writing because I needed to make sure that I had all the, the correct details. So yeah, the continuity is tough. It's, it's really hard, but I need to get it right because it's really important to me that that all the pieces fit. Yeah. I have two interjections. Number one, uh, we need a star. Uh, like, I can't even speak right now. We need a sign <laughs> newsletter ASAP. Like, uh, I need to know what daddy cry check sign is 100%. <laughs> Uh, and we also really, I am enthused to know that I'm not the only one rereading Wolf Rain. <laughs> Please take it away, Scarlett. I just had to throw in those two. No, no, I love it. I, 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 I love that. I think uh, I've been thinking a lot about like the hardest part of writing because I feel like it changes, it changes every book that I, that I write. Um, the fun part for me, I love world building. Um, 
I write a lot of retellings, uh, but I, I just, the, the process of like reading and prepping for it is like one of my most favorite things ever. Like I read a ton of like grim fairy tales and like across different translations because they all kind of are communicated differently depending on the time. I love that kind of stuff. Um, I love, you know, spending time building worlds and characters who are going to interact with that world. I do start with characters first and I feel like I sort of build, like they tell me what the world looks like and then that's when I start my research, but I just, that part is just the, the, the funnest thing. Like I love that. The hard part is writing it, like, <laughs> like sitting down and like putting the words on the page. And at this point with chaos, I think that the the heart, the, the thing that's been the most challenging for me is like making sure that I am tying up every thread and um, trying to keep track of it all because, uh, you know, I don't think I realized until I got to, you know, quite this end that I had so many characters and and I think that's what happens when you sort of, instead of doing like, um, some people do like a book per, like for each set of pe like people, uh, but when you carry them through, it's like, it's so much harder. And I definitely feel like that's my struggle, uh, aside from actually like writing the book. <laughs> I was really impressed when I was reading I was like how is she keeping track of all these people I was like my writer brain was like this is really impressive <laughs> I like, I yeah I cannot tell you like I it's kind of like how you know when you write and it's just a thing that you feel I, I yeah. relate to that so hard because that's exactly what happens because I'm just like oh in my brain I'm like oh you got to remember this you got to remember that you got to remember that and that's, that's how I do it I just go through and I have no clue how I do it, but thank God I can. <laughs> because I obviously, like, I'm not going to outline very well, and I don't. <laughs> I, I'm still stuck on you all just, like, sitting at home rereading your own books. <laughs> that gives me so much joy. <laughs> I've only done that once. I've only read, I have read Malice. I asked for to prep for gods and chaos. And I was actually impressed with myself. I, at first I thought, oh, you're going to hate it. Like, <laughs> you're going to hate your book. But no, I was like, oh, this is good. And yeah, so I've only done that like once or twice for, for KBB and, um, and Malice. But KBB was because I, I feel like I didn't get to spend as much time with it. And I really love King of Battle and Blood and uh, those characters because they're all terrible. And I, I just love them for that. They, I love them because they're horrible. Uh, so that's why I go back to that series. <laughs> oh, man. Well, OK, again, I thank you all so much for answering all of the audience questions that we could get to heart exo y'all but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if we didn't end with you know a little more fun <laughs> so the first thing about game destiny i forgot <laughs> okay, <yeah. clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is very simple it's gonna be superlatives um, so, you know, just think of your books as a, as a yearbook or a graduating class and who would get these superlatives. And then since we're going to ride this school metaphor all the way, we're going to graduate <laughs> to, uh, another level real quick. Uh, everyone who is still around, feel free to throw out your thoughts to these questions as well. So Scarlett and Nalini, in your books, who is most likely to cause a scene at a club? Hermes. <laughs> bears, just bears in general. All <laughs> yeah, the bears. I know. I just put bear. <laughs> just bears. <laughs> All together. Yeah, it's so literally. Bears have literally been banned from the club, you know? That's, that is true. That is true. They have been banned. <laughs> but they are the life of the party, though. So it's kind of like, ah, <laughs> institute the bare fee service charge. <laughs> OK. Who is most likely to be voted biggest flirt? Biggest flirt. What the hell is I would default to Apollo. <laughs> It would definitely be Harry, but here's Catherine. 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, Apollo, yeah, he's flirting with everybody, I think. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think okay. well, I think we're all in agreement that it's also Hermes, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, who has the best smile? Ooh. Ladies. <laughs> oh, they said Lucas. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie. If, I don't know how Brilliant. I might respond if Haiti smiled at me. So you're probably right. You <laughs> probably melt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will Who say, like, like Haiti, you would probably like melt, but I mean, Herbie definitely does have a dazzling smile. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, he can't even answer the all questions. <laughs> I'm like thinking really hard, but I like mm. that, you know, Riley, he has that really slow, kind of rare smile, but when it comes and it's just, yeah, I can just see him, you know, with the triplets in his arms and he's just smiling and oh, my ovaries are melting, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of Dorian too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I saw Dorian He's more too. of a flat type, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Lucas as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay, everyone's oh. agreeing with it about Riley. Caleb. Caleb is smiling for Zahara. I'm not sure about that. Do you really want Caleb smiling at you? Do you really want him smiling at you? <laughs> I think that's the last thing you see before you die, honestly. <laughs> I don't think I've so. ever seen Caleb smile. <laughs> Unless you're Sahara, no. Maybe it's <laughs> wishful thinking. <laughs> um, okay, last last one of this round before we we graduate to to something a bit, you know, you know, just a bit harder. Um, who is most likely to be voted from your recent book, sexiest character alive? So sexiest character alive. <laughs> Dionysus. We're going to go with Dionysus. <laughs> Hades already got it. Uh, Hades would get it, though. We all know. Like, yeah, Hades would get it. I think I think it would be Valentin. Oh, we did We did get some. Okay, okay. We did. We did Valentin. got a little of him. So I think yeah. he's just. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Do you disagree? I'm just kidding. I'm, 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 Yakov, I feel like he he he's kind of like a he is yeah I mean of course that these guys I just feel like because Valentin was the first bear we saw That's so true. he's got the he's got the lead there in in the sexiness voting so yeah we need some more time we'll take yeah we need more time. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he shows up at Silver's door and she's about to pass out oh Yes, you're right. And he climbed the building. He climbed the building. That's you're right. That's <laughs> you're right. <laughs> okay, the last thing that we're going to do before we go is side change lane gods. Because I love a mashup. Okay. <laughs> hey, if side change lane characters were gods, and gods were side changeling characters. It could be anybody, not necessarily from this most recent book. Who would they be? Let's start with the one and only Yaakov. If he were a oh. god. If he were a god, he would be. <laughs> oh, I think Scarlet should answer this one. A bear. Yes. bear. Um, I'm just I'm just going through your characters in my head, going, hmm. I don't hmm. know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard trying to think of your characters as someone else's characters. Like, I know. I tell you what I can Listen, do. Listen, I would say no one in the chat us. Like, no one is. Someone said Caleb and Zeus. <laughs> I think Caleb and Hades. Come on, Caleb and Hades. <laughs> I feel like that would be. Yeah. One, yeah, yeah. I think Caleb and Hades. Yeah. I was like, one hundred percent. I only think has it for Oh, uh, so I think Yakov is Dionysus. You, uh, you think? So? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's a. See, but I think I think you could do the other twin. Pavel could be um, Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> She's a troublemaker. So I think I think yeah, that's her. fair. He Hermes, one hundred percent. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So, so it, 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 like Hades, then Sahara has to be Persephone. Like, yeah. There's yeah. literally there's no other option. That's true. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's true. You know, she was trapped and oh, it, true. It, it, the uh, same trajectory. Yeah. yeah. That it wasn't that hard. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, last one I'm gonna put out for you. Last character, um, and that's gonna be Arwen. Ooh. Mhm. Mhm. <laughs> Scarlett, you look like you're physical pain. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it is I'm like. Who's in this book? <laughs> like, who's in God's? Cause I, yeah, no, I'm thinking of William characters. <laughs> oh, it's just like, um, in my brain. Who's sweet? Also, do I have any sweet characters? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, do I have any characters who are kind? Right. Like, <laughs> not just Wolverine, but even Persephone does something in this book. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> she, she's found her dark side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always feel like Persephone is going on, like, you know, her trajectory in mythology is becoming morally gray. Like, that's her whole, the whole concept of her character. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I'm like, who do I have who's great, who's kind? Somebody oh, oh my gosh. Phaedra is kind, but she's, oh, oh Harmonia. Harmonia. Yeah. yeah. Harmonia is very sweet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Veronica. I was like, who's kind? Thank you for answering our question for <laughs> You did it. You did it. You won. You all won the game. Someone said maybe my suite is different. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you all so much. That was so much fun. Thank you, audience, for being such wonderful participants and making this an awesome time. Again, Scarlett Nalini, congratulations on your new books. And everybody, if you don't follow Scarlett or you don't follow Nalini, go follow them. Find out all of the things that are happening with them. It's always wonderful. And thank you all for such a great time. And we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you, you Destiny. Thank you. I appreciate it.